My name is Jessica Zamora. Welcome to my capstone project from EDUC 526, the final course in my Master's in Education degree from Azusa Pacific University. Before we begin, I'd like to tell you a bit about why I chose APU as a school where I would receive my credential and master's degree. It wasn't until high school that I learned about APU. I was looking into schools with well-known education programs because I knew I wanted to go into the field of teaching. I heard wonderful things about this school, including its atmosphere of helpful and caring professors, challenging courses, and its motto of God first. I continued my graduate studies at APU after receiving my bachelor's degree in liberal studies in 2012 and enrolled in a dual credential and master's degree program. During my coursework in the master's program, I became familiar with an amazing array of technologies, both in website and application format. In EDUC 511, I learned the benefits of using online portfolios such as live binders. In EDUC 517 and 525, both electives, I learned the visual aspects of technology, including to use Photoshop and how to create my own website using Weebly. In EDUC 512, I was exposed to the power harnessed within Microsoft Office Suite, as well as Apple products such as Pages, Keynote, and Numbers. I also created my own very first web quest using Quest Garden. In EDUC 514, I learned how to use iMovie to create videos in order to push the boundaries of my classroom to a newer, flipped model approach. In EDUC 515, I was introduced to evolving educational technologies and was urged to begin fostering my online professional learning network through Twitter. In EDUC 522, I was pushed as an educator to de look deeply at what Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences had to say about the learners in my classroom. Together with that understanding, I was able to expand my curricular unit to meet the needs of all learners, as well as reach all levels of Bloom's taxonomy. In EDUC 513, also an elective, I learned how to use online le lesson platforms to my advantage and to continue expanding my knowledge of the flipped classroom model. Finally, in EDUC 526, I was able to make time to reflect on all I have been exposed to and how each of these experiences has stretched and molded me into a different kind of educator, one that sees the value of the future and tries to meet student needs where they are through the use of digital teaching and learning. My Action Research Study Upon given the choice to determine an area of my professional or personal life that needed structure in order to fix, I immediately knew I needed an intentional action plan to help me budget my finances. As a graduate student coming to the end of the program, I cannot help but be aware of the student loans that loom over my shoulder upon graduating from APU. Though I trust in God's provision over my life as witnessed in my experience quadrant of the Wesleyan Quadrilateral, I also know that in order to take charge of my finances, I have to approach them in a logical and rational way. And so, I began with a research question that asked, Will using a monthly budget increase my ability to save money for a rainy day and or any other big ticket items such as a Mac laptop computer? I began researching budgeting ideas on the internet when Dr. Joanne Gilbreth suggested looking through Google Doc templates to find a monthly budget. That seemed easy enough. And together we found one that became the basis for my action research study. I began logging in my income and expenses only to find that a big chunk of my monthly paycheck was going to food. I realized that I was eating out a lot more than I thought. There were also several deductions made from a particularly famous coffee shop, Starbucks. I realized that these decisions were not only deterring my ability to save, but also affecting my health in the long run. Upon realizing exactly where my money was going, I decided I had to make some consistent and intentional changes to truly affect my spending habits. This would include setting up automatic deposit from my checking to my savings accounts each month. The amount would cover what I would typically spend on fast food and Starbucks in one month, which would equal $120. By doing so, I came to the conclusion that by the end of this year, I will have reached my goal of saving up for a MacBook computer proving that with intentionality and dedication, responsible saving habits are possible. For my curricular unit, I chose to create a unit on the concept of water conservation. 
Earlier in the year, my fifth grade students partook in an ecology program that exposed them to the various ecological concepts, one of them being water conservation. I was inspired to create a more in-depth unit on this particular subject. Little did I know, it would become a very relevant topic for Californians, as we have recently been living through the worst drought in our state per recorded history. I love that this earth science concept can draw from real life examples. Students are made aware of the world around them and are geared with effective tools and strategies to help decrease water shortage and take care of the earth we have been blessed to call home. Students will spend three weeks looking at the water cycle, the world water crisis, and how water conservation seeks to take care of the precious, life-giving natural resource we know as H2O. The unit objectives span a variety of content. In this unit, students will learn about water as a depleting natural resource, one that must be conserved. Students will also explore the world water crisis and expand their global perspective in the process. In addition, students will identify and evaluate water conservation strategies to then create a public service announcement as their solution to the world water crisis. Along the way, students will intersect with educational technologies. Each activity will align with Gardner's multiple intelligences and Bloom's taxonomy. Let's take a closer look at these projects. Week 1 looks at the water cycle and its direct impact on humans, plants, and animals. Students will be creating a word cloud based on their research of the water cycle. This project will be done in groups of 3 to 4 and will ask students to collaborate with others, as well as compare and contrast their word cloud to that of another groups. Next, students will work with a partner to create a newspaper article. Students will make relevant connections between current events such as California's recent drought and the direct impact precipitation has on such a reality. Students will then continue to work in groups to create a comic strip highlighting how plants and animals are directly impacted by the water cycle. They will then post their comic strip onto Twitter where their classmates can leave comments. Students will work collaboratively to create a song or jingle to help them remember the steps in the water cycle. Those with a musical intelligence will surely enjoy this fun yet instructional activity. Scan these QR codes and visit the App Store for more information on the websites and applications used throughout Week 1. Week 2 focuses on the world water crisis. Students will gain a global perspective on this drastic reality during the activities and projects set out for this week. In addition, all of the multiple intelligences will be addressed. Students will begin by creating a newsreel using the Talking Tom and Ben news app. Verbal and kinesthetic learners will particularly enjoy this project where higher level thinking skills such as analysis and application are touched upon. Students will then view a video about the melting of the Himalayan glaciers and will write a blog in KidBlog to answer a critical thinking question. Intrapersonal learners will thrive with this writing activity, as will naturalist learners. As a final product for week two, students will work collaboratively to create an Animoto video complete with information and powerful images to highlight the realities of the world water crisis. These videos will then be posted to the school website to bring awareness to such a dire cause. Make sure to visit the following websites by scanning the QR codes and check out the Talking Tom and Ben News app in the App Store. Finally, we end with week three, a call to action and a look at water conservation as a solution to the world water crisis. During this final week, students will be synthesizing what they have learned and will be creating a public service announcement. As a whole class, students will communicate and collaborate to organize an information booth to be featured in the school's upcoming open house. Students will use Photoshop Touch on the iPad to create flyers and brochures featuring facts about the water cycle and the world water crisis. Other projects made throughout the unit will also be put on display at the information booth. Students will culminate by going on a walking field trip in search of water conservation at work, or lack thereof. Students capture images to then be posted onto Instagram. Though this is a natural walk, technology lends itself perfectly to such a product. All types of learners will be engaged during this activity. Finally, students will work in small groups to plan, script, schedule, film, and edit their public service announcement using iMovie for the iPad. This final product involves all of the multiple intelligences and challenges students to evaluate and create based on all that they have learned in the span of three weeks. The applications used in week three can be purchased at the App Store.